Well guys, we have a few topics to go over. We will update both the short-term and long-term light curves of Tabby Star using Bruce Gary's latest G-band measurements and begin our transition to David Lane's data. We will also briefly discuss two new papers that have been submitted that provide an explanation of what caused the short-term dimming events of Tabby Star last year. And we will show you a strange asteroid that may be a prime candidate for future human mining. Let's first look at the short-term light variations of Tabby Star. From our last update on December 31st, this is the normalized G-band light curve of Tabby Star using the 20 data point simple moving average as the nominal flux level. And it showed that we were up approximately 0.22% above the nominal flux level. So let's move forward in time by adding Bruce Gary's G-band measurements to this light curve. So this is the normalized light curve on January 2nd and our final data point on January 3rd. So on that day, we were sitting at approximately 0.25% above nominal flux. Bruce Gary has decided to take a sabbatical from observing Tabby Star, and that's why we do not have any further data to take us to the present date. His daily observation window is approximately one hour during this time of year, and the data is quite noisy. Also, he devotes a large amount of time observing and is deserving of some time off. We will now shift to using David Lane's data from his observatory in Nova Scotia, Canada. The problem with doing this is that we have not received many updates from him over the past few months due to the cloudy weather at his location, and hence the brightening curve is not fully formed. And we are only getting approximately one or two measurements a week from him. So just to show you what the weather looks like over the next week, let's go check it out. Alexa. Give me the seven day weather forecast for Halifax, Nova Scotia. Here's the weather in Halifax, Canada for the next seven days. Sunday, 14 degrees and cold temperatures. Monday, 34 degrees and cold weather and freezing rain. Tuesday, 38 degrees and an abundance of clouds and snow flurries. Wednesday, 28 degrees and lots of clouds. Thursday, 44 degrees and clouds and showers. Friday, 48 degrees and showers. Saturday, 35 degrees and cloudy skies. So we will now look at the long-term light curve of Tabby Star using the last of Bruce Gary's data and focus in on the last 105 days, which incorporates both the brightening event as well as where we were up to January 3rd. So this is the status of the long-term light curve we showed on December 31st, and we are using the 20 data point simple moving average of the G-band measurements to track the long-term flux trend of Tabby Star, which is represented by the darker blue circles with the red borders. And as you can see, on December 31st, we were approximately 0.66% below the highest flux level reached by the 20 data point simple moving average. So let's move forward in time to January 3rd by adding Bruce Gary's G-band measurements to this light curve and also advancing the corresponding 20 data point simple moving average curve. And on January 3rd, we were down approximately 0.63% below the brightest average flux level. Notice that the last measurement did not stay at the recovered brightening level. It fell back down abruptly. So it's anyone's guess if this predicted recovery is a lasting one or perhaps a transient. And finally, the best fit curve is shown here. For our second topic, two new papers have been published and submitted on January 2nd and provide an explanation on what caused the short-term dimming events of Tabby Star last year. And we have included two links below if you want to read those two papers. The first paper called the first post-Kepler brightness dips of KIC 8462852 basically states that dust with a small size component, less than 0.5 microns radius, produce the short-term dimming events we observed last year. But they further state in this paper that the long-term dimming is a completely different thing. Their data did not place any constraints on the color of the long-term secular dimming, which they state may be caused by independent processes or probe different regimes of a single process. This was our finding in our video dated several months back on August 10th, and we will have a thumbnail for you to click on if you want to review that video at the end of this video update. And the second paper also pretty much states the same conclusion. 
The important thing to note from the second paper is they state that the size of the dust particles that would be needed to produce these short-term dips would be quickly blown out by radiation pressure from the star and the particles would have to be constantly generated and replenished on time scales of days. So this shows the generation of dust must be consistent and ongoing. You know, some folks are uh, speculating that the dust that we are seeing may be caused by ongoing mining activities of asteroids around Tabby Star, and that this dust may be the cause of the short-term dips and flux. And they further state that the longer-term secular dimming may be from the construction resulting from the mined and processed material. So speaking of mining, there's an asteroid in our solar system that orbits between Mars and Jupiter within the main asteroid belt. It follows an orbit that has an average distance from the Sun of approximately three astronomical units. And the name of this asteroid is called 16 Psyche. And this asteroid is the mother load of iron and nickel for future space mining. It appears to be an exposed metal core made almost entirely of nickel iron metal, which is approximately 253 kilometers in diameter. And it has a length of that of the state of Massachusetts and a surface area of about 642,000 square kilometers, which makes it a bit larger than the surface area of California. Scientists say that this asteroid was probably a protoplanet approximately 500 kilometers in diameter and may have lost its rocky outer shell through a series of hit and run collisions, but not catastrophically torn apart, leaving the iron and nickel core largely intact. So with this asteroid, humans do not have to dig through a thick, rocky shell and generate a lot of dust to get to the pure metal core. It has been calculated that the iron in 16 Psyche would be worth approximately 10,000 quadrillion dollars, as in 15 more zeros. So NASA plans to launch a mission to 16 Psyche in the summer of 2022, and it will arrive at the asteroid in 2026 and it will spend 21 months in orbit around this asteroid, mapping and studying its, its properties. Well guys, the data coming in will probably be sparse for the next few months. So this channel plans to bring more supplemental material into our video updates, like uh, what we did on this one. Anyway guys, that's all we have for this update. Take care and we will see you in our next video update.